Hey guys, Tara here. I'm bringing you my July TBR. And this month I have decided to start um, doing a TBR wheel to pick my books. Of course, I am not the first person to come up with this idea. Um, there is a lot of really, really great YouTubers out there who use the wheel of TBR and I will link a few of them below, some of my favorites. So I decided to spin the wheel a total of five times this month. I want to make sure that I'm able to finish what I'm bringing into this month with and then with my TBR. So I've decided on five. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and spin the wheel. Here we go. All right, spin number one, thriller or mystery? Okay, spin number one. Uh, for psychological thriller or mystery, I have chosen The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. Um, I keep hearing such great things about her new one. What about the motel? I, I cannot think of what it's called, but it's on my list of two be reads. Um, this is her first book. I had gotten this through Book of the Month. I had started reading it at one point and I read like the first two chapters and was having a hard time getting into it, but I'm going to go ahead and give it another try and hopefully it's as good as everybody that I have listened to talk about it. Spin number two. Number generator. I guess I should go with how many shelves I have. Okay, so actual bookshelves is a minimum one. Max four. Randomize. Oh, bookshelf four. On bookshelf four, there are four separate shelves. So we'll randomize that again. Again, number four. And on the last shelf, we have 31 books. All right. Number 26. Okay, for spin number two, it was the random number generator and um, got All the Ever Afters by Danielle Teller. So it's the untold story of Cinderella's stepmother. So it is a uh, retelling. I love retelling so very much. And this is an absolutely gorgeous cover. Quite like it. So hopefully this is as good as I hope it's going to be. And I love it. Spin number three. 500 or more pages. Oh boy. Okay, so for spin number three, we got a book that is 500 or more pages. So for that, I'm going to go with Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, the Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America. Uh, just hauled this one. Probably haven't seen it yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's going to be up because I'm still waiting on the rest of the books for the haul. Uh, so this is a chunker. If I look at like how many actual pages it is, there are 582 pages. However, the index is huge um, and the notes are quite extensive also. So the actual book itself the epilogue is 511 pages so meets the criteria of 500 plus and it's new but i'm really i'm actually really excited to read that okay spin number four a commentary okay so for spin number four i got a commentary and for that i am going to read um, esther by charles swindoll esther is probably one of my favorite books in the Bible. Um, I just absolutely love it. I have a really special place for her. I've done a bunch of, of Bible studies about her, read some Christian fiction that features her, kind of fills in the gaps from the story, that kind of thing. So I've had this on my shelf for quite a while and am really looking forward to reading this. It is also on my 20 Christian books in 2020 list. Okay, our last spin. Spin number five. Literary fiction. Okay, so spin number five, which was our last spin, was uh, literary fiction. So for that, 
I have chosen The Dinner List by Rebecca Searle. And this has also been on my TBR for so long. Um, so I'm just gonna read the thing here. What if the love of your life, a love you thought was over, showed up for dinner one night? We've all played the game. Which five people, living or dead, would you like to have dinner with? But what if that dinner was to actually happen? When Sabrina Nielsen arrives at her 30th birthday dinner to meet her best friend, she finds at the table some unexpected guests, among them her favorite professor from college, Audrey Hepburn, and her ex, Tobias. After almost a decade-long love affair with Tobias, Sabrina is at a crossroads, much more significant than turning 30. The New York life she always anticipated for herself and that she worked hard for doesn't appear to be in her future. Her best friend has moved on to motherhood. Her family might as well be strangers, and marriage is as far off as it has ever been. While the wine is poured, appetizers are served, and dinner table conversation begins. It becomes clear that there's a reason these six people have been gathered together. So, uh, great concept. Just sounds really fun. I hope it's as good as I anticipated being. Okay, so those are the five for my wheel. I also have some books that I'm carrying into the month. Um, that I had started towards the end, and I just, I knew I wasn't going to get through them. Okay, the first is... 19 Minutes by Jodi Pico. Um, I am trying to read all of Jodi's catalog. Absolutely adore her. So this one is about a school shooting in a really small town. Okay, so this one says, Sterling is an ordinary New Hampshire town where nothing ever happens. Until the day its complacency is shattered by an act of violence. Jodi Cormier, the daughter of the judge sitting on the case, should be the state's best witness. But she can't remember what happened before her very own eyes. Or can she? As the trial progresses, fault lines between the high school and the adult community begin to show, destroying the closest of friendships and families. 19 Minutes asks what it means to be different in our society, who has the right to judge someone else, and whether anyone is real, ever really who they seem to be. So, which sounds amazing. I mean, Jody's amazing anyway. Always. So, right now I'm on page 69. It's like three chapters in, and of course, like everything she writes. Um, totally gripping. I just haven't had enough time to sit down and actually read it yet. Okay, then we've got um, Heaven by Randy Elkhorn. And this is a book about heaven using scriptural evidence for what heaven actually is. And it talks more about the new heaven on the new earth, as opposed to the heaven that we all picture ourselves going to when we die currently. So um, talking about how the um, earth is going to be transformed and renewed whenever Jesus comes back and um, strongly taken a lot from Revelation and just very, very scripturally based. Far I'm liking it, it's, it's pretty dense. Um, this is quite a chunk or two. This book is also over 500 pages. Um, the book itself is like 530 some pages, but then, you know, that's like a lot of notes and a lot of references. The actual, like through Appendix B, it's 492. So like, here's this, but then all this here is actually just notes and appendices and references, things like that. So it's good. I'm reading like one to two chapters a day. So I'm, hopefully I finish this one in not too, too long. I don't know, probably by like mid July, hopefully I'll have it done. Okay, then um, Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This is a reread for me, but the first time I read it, I really did a lot of, I skimmed through it a lot because it was so similar to season one and I had just come off watching the season one, but now it's been several years since I watched it and I really want to give it a good read this time. And this is also the illustrated edition, which I got as a gift through the Reddit gift exchange this year. And I was just so excited. My Reddit Secret Santa really spoiled me this year. Um, I will link that down below. It was a really, really good Secret Santa exchange. So I don't anticipate finishing this this month. I'm really like taking my time. I am on one of Eddard's chapters, page 269. There's like 800 some pages in this, 871. So um, I'm going to be reading this for the next couple of months. I'm in no hurry to get through it. Okay, then... I am going to read Where Dreams Descend, which is the Owl Crate book for June. Um, I just did this in the haul that is not yet posted, but this one sounds so good. It is a 
the inspirations for this are Phantom of the Opera, Moulin Rouge, and The Night Circus, all of which are like top favorites for me. So really, really psyched. Uh, I, I hope it lives up to the hype. And finally, what I know I'm going to be doing this month, the last one, um, continuing in my read of the Apologetic Study Bible, read through the Bible every year. This is the uh, HCSB Holman Christian Standard Bible, but with all the apologetics articles and um, biographies and notes and all that stuff. So this month for July, going to be reading in Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, and Isaiah. So, all right, so that's it. Uh, anybody else read any of these? Let me know what you think down below. Did you like them? What are your thoughts? I would love to interact with you guys in the comments. Um, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up. All right, guys.